Hello and welcome to another of our EdTech webinars. Uh, today we're joined by Fandi from Denby High School, who will be talking us through metacognition using Google Sheets. So we're um, going to jump into that in just a moment. Just want to sort of go through a few points in terms of how today's going to work. Firstly, today is recorded and we'll be put on our YouTube page very shortly, details of which will be shared with you um, and you'll have seen on the holding slides just before we started. As we go through today's presentation, if you have any questions, you'll see at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A button, which will give you a chance to type in any questions that you might have for Fandy as she goes through it in the presentation. So don't feel that you've got to wait until the end to pose your questions. You can pose them as we go through and then we'll come to those just after she's finished in her presentation. Again, this is a, uh, one of many sort of webinars that's going to be happening over the course of the next uh, half term. You'll notice that there's a majority of them taking place on a Tuesday and a Thursdays. There are some additional dates as well. So without further sort of a hold up, I'm going to pass over to Sandy, who will talk you through uh, using Google Sheets to support our students with metacognition. Thank you, James. Uh, hi all. Um, so my name's Tandy and I am a teacher of science at Denby High School and I'm also a digital practitioner for science at Denby. So in today's session uh, we're going to go through how to create a resource that is going to, um, a resource in Google Sheets that is going to help your pupils um, develop their metacognition and develop their independent learning. So one of the things that I've enjoyed a lot about working remotely and using technology over the last few months um, has been the amount of data that we can collect and um, the question level analysis that we can get from things like our Google Forms and, um, and quizzes that way. Um, these have helped me a lot to pinpoint um, individual pupils' needs and to see uh, what areas um, of strength and weaknesses that they have. Um, and that's allowed me to plan my starters, plan my interventions and plan uh, revision resources a bit more um, effectively. And this is something that we can bring in, bring back into our classroom as we're sort of transitioning back into our in-class teaching again. So um, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to prepare a question, um, question level analysis tracking sheet um, that our pupils can use. Um, so this will take a little bit more planning so um this is something that i wouldn't really do for um wouldn't really do for my smaller starters or anything like that usually for um your sort of end of topic tests or mid topic assessments so um i'm just going to share you in now um so we're going to have a look at this um so this is the resource that we're going to be creating in this um in this walkthrough um and we can see here that our students um so we've got our students here, and at the moment it's just A, A to D. Our students will be able to see what specific areas or what specific questions in this assessment um, they need to work on, which areas were their strengths, and it is, will be specific to those pupils. So the main aim of this resource is to help pupils uh, pinpoint their own understanding and be in a position where they um, can clearly see uh, what things they need to target in their, in their own revision. Um, there is also embedded support um, within, those, um, within those questions that is going to help pupils to target and uh, lead their own interventions as well. Um, of course, this is going to be useful for you as a teacher as well. Um, and we've, we can see we've got our averages there for our classes and we can see um, which areas uh, we need to maybe go over again um, as a whole class. We can also see which students um, may need our additional support and we can see what areas they need that additional support as well. So um, I will be talking about this, um, I will be going through this with the example of a science uh, test, but um, the things that we're going to go through in this session are not subject specific at all. Um, so hopefully from whatever subject you're teaching from or whatever key stage area, um, this will be useful for you as well. Um, okay, so we're going to walk through then, <coughs> sorry, we're going to walk through then um, how we're going to create this resource. So for, uh, for this um, example, I'm going to be looking at this key stage three, um, key stage three science test. So let's assume that this is the test that I've given to my pupils in the classroom. Um, 
so this is the test that I've given to my people in the classroom. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through this, um, go through this test with my pen and paper um, and pick out four things uh, for each question. So the first thing is, what is this question about? So a bit of a question description. Um, I need to know how many marks are we, that part is worth. Um, I need to know what section of the um, what section of the test I'm talking about. And then the final thing, um, are there any skills or anything that are being assessed by this question? So we'll have a look at that example for question one then. So here uh, for question one, I've got um, one A to B, sorry. I've got four marks worth of questions here in question one A to B. And these four marks worth of questions are all relating to the information in this table. So the skills that are being assessed here is reading the table. Um, the skills that are being tested are reading, the te reading that table and my description there. I want my pupils to be able to identify the different states of matter uh, using their table. Um, using their table there. And all of that is worth four marks. Um, I'm gonna move on a little bit and I can see there for the second part of the question, even though it's still in the same question, it's not assessing the same things. So that first part was assessing their reading the table. And this second part is more of a long answer question. So here I've got question 1E um, and this is worth four marks. And again, I'm gonna note down, um, I'm gonna note down the description for that question. And I'm going to note down, um, note down what skills are being assessed in that question as well. Um, so what I'll do, and I'll, I can do this on the day of the assessment, or I can do that, um, or if I've got the test already earlier, I'm now gonna go through, I can go through that whole test and, um, answer those four questions for each of those um, for each of the questions or the question parts. So what section is it? Um, what's the description? What skills are being tested? And how many marks is that worth? I'm going to do that for the whole test. Now we're not going to uh, sit here and watch me go through that on there. Um, but once I've done that for my whole test, I'm going to um, I'm going to put that information into my tracker. So now, those four things that I talked about earlier, I'm gonna input them into my tracker. So I'm gonna put my question description in, um, any skills that were being tested. So for that first part, we were reading a table. Uh, the question number, um, for that one, it was question 1A to 1B, and how many marks that section were worth. And for this one, it was four marks. And I'm gonna continue to do that um, and fill that in for all of my questions um, all of my questions in that test. So here now, um, I've filled that information out. Um, I've got my question details uh, filled in. Now I'm gonna start to create the tracker part of this, um, the tracking part of this tracker. So once we've completed that, um, before I do, sorry, <clears throat> I can see that at the moment, um, because I want all of my pupils to be able to use this tracker at the same time, um, it's not very useful at the moment because that um, because these panes aren't frozen. So as you can see, when my pupils are moving around, um, the headers are going to be moving out of the way, and the students' names aren't going to be all showing. It's not doesn't really look like much of a problem at the moment because I've only got four students here. But in our typical classroom, we're going to have a lot more students than that. So we're going to want to make sure that we freeze those panes as well um, before we continue. So to do that, we're going to uh, go into our view and we want to freeze our panes so that we can um, so that the students can see all of the question details and they can see their own names um, at any point and that will stay in place. Hopefully that makes sense. Sorry. Um, okay, so uh, once we have done that, we're going to uh, we're going to need to use two different um, two different formulae for this um, for this tracker. Now, I'm not really too, um, I'm not um, got too much experience with using um, Excel or using Google Sheets myself. So um, hopefully this won't be too terrifying for anyone there out there who's not really um, too confident with using Sheets, um, sheets yet either. Um, so we're only gonna be using two, um, two very simple formulae for this tracker before we start to conditionally format our, um, our tracker. 
So um, just to make it, things a little bit easier for me, I've just gotten rid of the um, descriptions part because we're just going to be working with the numbers for the time being. Um, I would also suggest that when you're taking your pupils through with this tracker that you give it to them in this view as well. Um, just makes it a little, little less overwhelming because they're not having to see all of that other information. They just have to deal with the numbers for now. Okay, so uh, first formula we're going to need to use is um, for our total marks here. So you could just put in the total number of marks that were available for this test um, yourself, but just to double check your own maths to make sure that you've not made a mistake while you were um, input in any of this, um, I would suggest you use the sum function instead. So, um, so we're going to total up the um, we're going to total up the number of marks in this total marks column. Um, and to do that, we're going to use the equal sum, um, equal sum formula. Now, um, Google has already anticipated that I'm going to want to get the sum of all of these, um, all of these numbers in that row. So I'm just going to click on that and accept that. So that's checked it correctly. There were 33 marks available for this test. Um, now, I want to also know what the total marks are for each student. So I want to copy, paste that formula into the rest, um, paste that formula so that it fills the rest of my students' columns as well. Um, to do that, I'm going to click on the, um, I'm going to click on the little blue square and I'm going to copy that, um, I'm going to drag that down to copy that formula into those cells as well. Um, Next thing that I'm going to be um, inputting now um, is my percentages. So I, I want to know the total marks that my student that each of my students have gained, and I also know, want to know uh, their percentage mark there. So I'm just going to input that in as well. Um, and to do that, I'm going to um, sorry. So I'm going to input my percentages into there as well. And to find my percentages there, I'm going to, um, I want to know what each student has got. And then I want to divide that by the total number of marks. Now, because the total number of marks is in this cell, I don't want that. Um, and I'm going to be copying that formula all the way back down again. I want to keep that, This. Um, I want to keep keep referring back to that same same cell each time. So here, um, I'm, go, I'm going to highlight the, um, that cell, and then I want, I want to keep it each time go into M33. So I'm going to put M and then dollar sign 33. And then that's going to tell my uh, formula to keep using that same cell each time so that it keeps the same number of total marks. Otherwise, it's going to keep reading down that list as I copy my um, formula down. So just quickly see that. And then I've got my percentage in that final formula as well, in that final column as well. Um, now I'll skip past this slightly. Um, the next thing that we're going to need to do is use the... <clears throat> is use an, another formula, which is our average if formula. This is gonna help me populate the uh, class average, um, class averages at the bottom here. So here I'm going to be, um, I'm gonna type in, um, sorry. So here I want to know the average marks uh, as a percentage for each of these questions. So I'm going to click on that, um, I'm gonna click on this class averages and I want to use the average if function. The reason I'm gonna use this, the average if function instead of the average function is because if your class is anything like my class, um, not all your students are necessarily gonna be in the lesson on the day that you've given out the test. So we want to rule out any empty boxes because we, if it's empty, I don't want that to be included in my average because it's just gonna um, it's going to decrease my average as well. So here I'm going to have av I'm going to put average if, and I want to I want to highlight all of these cells um, because I I want the average for this question one A to B. Um, 
but I also want it to only collect averages for things that are not an empty cell. And to tell it to do that, then I need to put the quotation marks and then left and right arrow end the quotation marks again. And then close that off. Now, I want this as average as a percentage. So I'm going to divide all of that by the value in um, by the total marks that were available for that section. Again, I can see that it's four in there. So I could have just typed in four, but I'm going to want to copy that formula over through to the rest of these questions. So I want it to carry um, to use the right number, um, the right number of marks for that question. So I'm going to click on the um, on that box instead. Um, at the moment, we um, at the moment we've got a bit of an error here. Um, nothing to worry about at all. That's just because all of our um, all of our boxes are currently empty. There's no values in there, so it's just um, it's going to say that there's an error. Um, but if I put in um, put in a number in there, so if I put in my one, I can see that I've got my percentage. Um, I've got my percentage in there now. Now, instead of, um, I want my percentages to be a whole number, so I'm going to need to decrease the number of decimal places in there, and I'll just use that button there to do that. Okay, um, now at this point, I can take that formula over to the rest of my, um, to the rest of my column, and that's just going to make sure that, um, that's just going to make sure that my whole column has that formula in it as well. Um, we're going to use that very similar formula again. Um, we're going to use the average if again for our total marks because I want to know what the average total marks was for this question. Um, sorry, for what the average total marks were for my class as well. But same as before, I don't want to know um, no, to include averages for people that haven't done the test yet. So this pupil here, um, at the moment, these are all zero and I don't want to include those into my average. So this time we're going to use average if again, and we're going to highlight those. Um, we're going to highlight those cells because that's the first criteria. I want it to be the total marks column, but this time I want to exclude any numbers that are left. That are I want it to exclude any cells that still have a zero. So I'm. I want the average only if it is greater than zero. So quotation mark, zero, quotation mark, uh, greater than zero, quotation mark, and then close that off. And again, it just says uh, error at the moment, and that's because we haven't got any values yet. Um, but if I put that value in, I can see now that it's collecting the averages only for the pupils that have actually completed it. So at the moment, I've only got one pupil who's got one. So the average for this class is one. And um, final column we're going to fill in is, um, Final column we'll fill in is our percentages column. And th this is gonna be a very similar function to the first two. Um, again, I want an average of these percentages if that value is greater than or equal to zero. And then again, now here I hadn't formatted this cell to already be in a percentage. Now you'll have noticed those other cells, they went straight to a percentage and that's because they'd been previously formatted. So with this example, I'll show you how to format that to, to um, a percentage. And it's very simple. Um, all you need to do is click on that percent button and then we can reduce the number of decimal places again so that it is a whole number percentage. Okay. Um, so th this is the creating the tracker part of our um, of our demo. Now we want to sh see how we can um, how we can conditionally format it so that um, sorry. Now we want to see how we can conditionally format it so that um, it changes colors as my pupils are adding in their marks. Um, so to do that, um, I've got sorry. So to do that, I'm going to be, um, I'm, I've got a little bit of a tracker here, a little bit of um, guidance here that I'm going to be using to help me figure out how many marks I'm going to give for each of these. Now, this is completely bespoke to you and bespoke to your class, um, to your class. Uh, if this is a higher set, I'm, um, the number of marks that I'll be expecting for each of these might be higher. So my threshold for an amber or a green might be a bit higher. 
Um, if you've got a lower ability class, you might decrease that threshold a little bit more, um, just so that um, you're not getting all reds or you're not getting all greens. It, it is bespoke to you and that's absolutely up to you. So here, um, so here I'm just gonna show you how I'm going to be um, conditionally formatting these cells. So we'll start off with the questions that were worth um, that were worth two marks. Okay, so that was question two A and question two F. And I'm going to highlight those two, um, those areas for each of those two. Now to conditionally format them, um, I'm going to right click, and I can scroll down to con conditional formatting. That's the first way. I can also um, go over to format up here and go down to conditional formatting and that will bring up my conditional format rules. Um, and at this point, uh, so I've already highlighted the cells that I need and where we, when we click on formatting rules, that's gonna give us all of the different rules that we can format our cells dependent on. So here, um, I want my cell to be red if my pupils have, um, I want my cell to be, uh, to be red if my pupils with two marks have um, for a two mark question if they have zero. So I'm gonna scroll down to, um, I'm gonna scroll down to if the value is equal to less than or equal to zero, I want that cell to turn red. So I'm gonna change that color and I want it to format to red. Um, I'm not gonna click on done, I'm gonna click on add another rule, okay? And that's gonna add another rule for the same range. And for that same range, I want, the, I want it to go to amber if the value is equal to one. So I'm gonna change that and change that pen color as well. And then again, I want to add another rule. I want it to go green if my cells, um, if that value is, um, is equal to two. And then that's gonna bring up those conditional formatting rules for all of that section, um, for all of those sections in my, um, in my question. And I'm gonna do exactly the same for all the, um, for all the other questions. I'll highlight them um, and I'll go, through, uh, I'll go through and conditionally format based on whatever rules you've decided on for these questions. And I'll add that, add a rule um, and change the color each time. I'm gonna do exactly the same with my total number of marks. Um, so you might do this based on, um, Sorry, I'm going to do exactly the same for my total number of marks, and you might do that based on the class average. You might decide um, it, it, it's up to you again. Um, you might have grade boundaries for your test. You can add those in um, into your conditional formatting rules as well. So that's how we're going to go through our tracker. And um, I'm going to quickly show you now um, our tracker in pro um, our tracker in uh, in progress. Sorry, our tracker in action here. So, for my example class here, um, I've got four different pupils in um, in this class, and um, on the day that I'm giving my pupils their tests back, um, I can I will give them their tests back, and I will give them this tracker, and they'll be able to input their values in as they go through. Um, they'll be able to input their own values into their own cell as they're going through. Um, so this takes a lot of the work off from you as a teacher. So I'm not expecting any teacher to be trying to go through and put all these values in for each student. That would be way too much work. But in class, this is something that um, this is something that our pupils can then do to get that question level analysis. Um, hopefully that makes uh, hopefully that was useful and hopefully that made sense. Um, I'm gonna hand it back to James, um, James now. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you, Tony. So obviously um, really kind of insightful tool. And I really like the fact that you're getting students to complete the actual um, data entry parts. Obviously I know that as teachers, it's one of the things that is kind of one of those laborious processes, but actually giving the onus back onto the students to reflect is a really sort of nice touch. So. What we're going to do, we're going to jump to some uh, questions now. So if you haven't had a chance to do so already, feel free. There's a little icon at the bottom that says Q&A and you can type your question. There's a few questions in there already that we'll jump straight into. So um, if we jump straight to uh, Emma Darcy's first question. So about the fact that you're not, you said yourself that you're not an Excel expert. And what was it that you did to upskill yourself uh, so that you're able to use Google Sheets effectively? Um, so 
obviously, like as we've all been using a lot more of this technology, um, people have been putting a lot more content on YouTube and um, things like that. And there's a lot, um, there's a lot of content on YouTube like that would help you with um, any part of using Excel really. So mostly for me, it was watching YouTube uh, YouTube uh, tutorials, and there's lots of different YouTubers on there that are uh, yeah that are using technology a lot. Perfect. So, so a lot of YouTube tutorials, I mean, just kind of to piggyback off that, obviously, this in itself, this webinar will end up on YouTube as well. And therefore, obviously, they'll be able to see the formulas and stuff that you've been using as well. So it could well be that the self sort of learning that you've carried out will then obviously go on to kind of enhance someone else as well, which is uh, really sort of a, a good sort of mentality. Um, another question then, obviously, looking at about the tracker and how, how motivational it is with your students. So in using this with your students, have you found it to increase their motivation? Uh, yeah, def definitely. Um, so it does create a lot of competition in the class because obviously they can all see, they can all see them um, see each other and how how well they've all done. And I don't know about you, but usually on test days, um, the big question is how many marks did you get? What did you get? But this makes it really clear, and they can all see um, each other as well. And yeah, builds a lot of friendly competition in the classroom. Um, but yeah, definitely very motivational. Yeah, I think I think that's something we can all relate to in that sort of like you say, whilst the tests are being given out before you even manage to give everything out, they're already asking each other, what did you get as a total? And I suppose in some respects, this could kind of combat that argument about what did you get as a total because they won't know until they've actually punched in yeah. their answers to each of the questions, at which point that's when they find out their total mark as a kind of a, a back sort of uh, sort of end to this as well. Um, again, looking at this then, so in using Google Sheets over other platforms. Hmm. Um, specifically obviously using G Suite for Education or Google Workspace as it's sort of being now called. Um, what are the benefits that you can see to doing it in this manner versus others? Um, so I like that it makes it really easy to be able to use it uh, with your students. Like you said earlier, like you're putting the data entry onto the pupils almost and they're able to um, participate in seeing, um, seeing that data entry. Um, so yeah, because it's because it's online and because you can um, you can get all your pupils with their Chromebooks to be open to the open to this sheet, it makes it really easy. Um, yeah, easy to collaborate uh, with the whole class. Um, and uh, Google's quite good at um, like it. It does um, it does sort of anticipate a lot of the things. Um, things for you as you're typing in like I said I'm not a massive um, Excel expert myself but even as you're work working through it it sort of gives you these suggestions in there and that almost gets you thinking oh well, I've not used that function before I wonder what that is and then you sort of get to find out more things that you can actually do in in your um, with your spreadsheets. Perfect yeah I think I think that's a really sort of key point is that idea of that anticipation or prediction as to what you're going to do and as a result almost being educated by the system uh, yeah. in itself. So a um, couple more questions um, then um, uh, before we sort of wrap up. So uh, Masuma is asking, how do you ensure that they're putting in the correct answers? Um, or do you find yourself having to correct scores uh, very often? Um, so uh, one thing I can go through and uh, just show you in a second, um, that um, little tool that will be useful with that. Um, so usually I would I would have already tallied up and I'll know what the to their total marks are anyway. So if if I'm going through and you know someone who I've written down had a six and suddenly they have 26 on here, obviously I can see it clearly on that from that front that they've done it wrong. But um, generally they the kids are quite honest. They want to see because I do tell them this isn't for anything else apart from to make you aware which parts you need to target. It's not, I'm not using it for anything else other than for, for you to understand your own learning. So they do, they do respond to it quite well in that sense. They want to know genuinely what they got. Um, but one, one issue I have had in the past, which Google has helped me with now, um, is that people sometimes can make a mistake and uh, start to change someone else's self, for example. Um, which does ha it does happen uh, sometimes by accident, and then you start to realise it's not an accident anymore. Um, so I'll quickly share you share you in just to show you one um, one other feature. Um, so, for example, here um, I had 
a student who a student quote unquote uh, who changed someone else's cell what you can do you can um, right click and you can show edit history for an individual cell and we can see here that um a Noreen, this was not her this wasn't her slide but she had gone in and changed and replaced values in someone else's cell so you can um sort of from a behavior management management standpoint you can also um keep track of it in that way yeah i think it's a really sort of crucial thing i think kind of hitting the two things in that if someone were to accidentally edit someone else's work then obviously there's a way we can track back to see who's done that but equally i think like you said already tallying up the total marks so you know what total marks someone's got and actually that then the onus is on the students that that spreadsheet is there for them and not so much for you so it's not a case of you're getting that information from it it's actually to to benefit them and therefore the honesty is on them to do it you already know what they got you've already got that documented on your own mark sheet and actually the onus is on them uh, we'll go to one final question before we wrap up um and then uh final one from emma uh, so what's your advice for staff who are intimidated by using this sort of tech um well don't be <laughs> uh, it's not it's not that terrifying honestly so um i started using these trackers uh, for a year eight group that I had um, last year and to create in the first instance of course it did take a lot more time but um, after a while uh, it'll be literally on test day because that's when we get our tests as well while I'm while they're doing their tests I can be annotating that I can start to input this tracker in straight away so it's yeah, what, there are there are a few little formulae here and there that will uh, help to get you started and you don't have to know it all at all uh, to be able to use this and use it effectively. I, th I think that's a really nice tip of the fact that you can create this whilst the students are actually sitting the test themselves. So it's not a case of you're adding to your workload, so to speak, so it's you give them the test and in the half an hour that they're doing the test or so, you can then create this and have it ready for, for to be handed straight back to them. So I, think, I really like that idea. So. We're going to wrap up there then. Uh, thank you, obviously, uh, for the brilliant contribution, obviously, demonstrations as well as Andy. And um, as with all of these webinars, these are going to be uploaded to our YouTube channel so you can recap any of these bits and pieces um, over the course of uh, any time that you like. Uh, we've got another webinar lined up on Thursday with Samantha Lewis, um, as you'll have seen in the start. Again, um, have a look on Twitter, Children Learning Trust, Emma Darcy will be sharing bits. I'll be sharing bits and pieces as well so you can join those. Uh, in the meantime, though, stay safe and we'll see you on Thursday. Thank you. Thanks.